gone. You have been cut down to the earth. You who have weakened the nations. So this is another good indication that this angelic being that is that is fallen is is Satan himself. Okay, we're gonna get verse. Can you, yes. Can you repeat that? Um, can you read that last verse, please? Uh, it's Isaiah 14 and 12. <coughs> um, how you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth, you who have weakened the nations. Hmm. That sounds like we're right now. Yeah. Um, verse 2, it says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now remember, we've seen in times past in um, the, the different trumpets or the seals being broken that when volcanoes um, erupt, it will cause the sky to look in such a way that it may um, be smoky, it may have a red tint to it, it may be dark. Um, and Many times that these these are natural disasters, but remember, Revelation is always not always. In most cases, is symbolic, so we can't take everything literally in this book, and we can't take everything as symbols. So, if I didn't confuse you, if that wasn't confusing enough, that's just the book of Revelation. So, um, <laughs> from a spiritual standpoint.
So, verse 3, it says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, again, when I think of locusts, I think of um, the... Um, Just help me. <laughs> My mind has went blank. The um, place when that the place that came on Egypt and how um, locusts, grasshopper, grasshopper. You know, I, I mean, I'm I can build with spiders. I can't build with things that jump. I don't want grasshoppers. I don't want frogs. I don't, I
to a field that's been burnt, what you see is that nasty looking, some may be dark, some may be where the heat's just burning up, it's that tan or brown color. Um, and remember that it destroys, a previous trumpet, it destroys a third of, of um, the, the trees and everything. So here, this is, the, these demons are saying, are being commanded that you should not hurt the grass, you should not um, hurt any green thing, neither any tree, and not those that have the mark in their forehead. Who are the ones left that have the mark in the forehead? 144,000. And those that have been converted by the witness of the 144,000. Um, now again, <laughs> I always look at words. Notice how it says in their foreheads, not on their foreheads. Mine says that. Depending on what version, yeah, depending on what version you have, it may say in, it may say on. Um, I look at stuff like that because especially the revelations in and on are very different. So whether it's on them or in them, we have Jesus in us. In, I, in I, us. I think if you read that in the Greek, that Greek word is where it's been translated into in and not on. That particular word you're talking about. I, I remember doing <laughs> studying that somewhere not too long ago. And then the Greek. So should it say on? Did it mean on? No, it meant like in. In. Okay. Yeah. That's what that's what the Greek word says, and that's the translation was. It was in the forehead, not on it. Okay. But it's not the first time it it was curses of disobedience. You go back in the first of the Bible in Deuteronomy, and then you go back here mm -hmm. in Revelation. And you write back <laughs> in the same. Yeah. But worse. It's almost, and I've heard it say that the Old Testament and the New Testament somehow mirror one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have the same kind of events happen, just in different um, time frames, uh, but they, they somewhat mirror one another. Now, <laughs> Is this the, when they're talking about the ones that that's um, like the 144, the one that you're talking about now? Is this are they the one, the part of the ones that's left after you know they said like a third of the people? Yes, they, will they be gone. Were These are ones that was left marked. after that. Yes, they were already marked and sealed. That's why before all of this happened, those 144,000, which we read, were 12,000 from each of the tribe, 12 tribes of Israel, they were marked to go through all of this. They were to be kept safe because of the knowledge that they were convert. Um, so some may say, well, then we got another chance. Do you want to take a chance? I don't think got a chance. I, I mean, if you want to play that I kind of, I, I don't want to do that. Um, I keep playing crap for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, if we accept it, I believe it, and I'm going to take him at his word. I'm going to make sure I'm right now. Amen. And we check out before this mess happens. Yes. Yeah. And I don't think it, the good Lord is making an ethnic cleansing. No, I mean, it, I don't think it's going to be. Anything left. My, my luck, I'd be on the plane and the pilot was saved. And when he checked out, the plane went down and I was saved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's going to be different scenarios when you think about that. Because it's like, well, the Bible speaks of there being those that have
If you ever have any questions, the best place to do is get the car and drive to the cemetery. You'll find out real quick. Yeah. We say this jokingly, but it's really not a joke. Have you ever went around the house or um, you were trying to find somebody and couldn't find them? And you said, Lord, did, did you come and I just didn't hear it? I didn't hear that sound. I think all the times that the Lord has said, fear not. I think he's going to allow us to fear if we got left like that. That's the reason I never answer you when you call. What? <laughs> 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 uh, you what's I like here is if, it, if these were real locusts uh, in this scripture, locusts are intended to eat every green thing they can find. Then you everything, not just the wheat, but everything. Yeah, so, so this is just another reason why these locusts, because again, John <coughs> could not write everything word for word as he saw it, or else we would never have the book of Revelation. They would have, the Roman Empire, those that are, um, mm -hmm. that were in, But because he had to use symbols, um, symbols here, they're all throughout Revelation. So locust, it means destruction. So we know that these these demons that are going to be unleashed, they are their intent is to wreak havoc on those people that are not marked, um, on that are left on the earth. Verse five says, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. So their job was not to kill, torment. They would jump on you for five months. For five months. <laughs> for five months. It, it, it is to, um, have you ever, I know all, all of us probably have at some point in your life, you just said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of the devil fighting me. I'm sick of his schemes. I'm sick of being weary. I'm sick of this.
It is just, I say it's ironic. It's not ironic. If this was all put together um, <coughs> by, you know, God himself. But the fact that the normal life cycle of locusts are five months, and it says that these locusts were meant um, to be unleashed to torment for five months. Whether it's five months or five minutes, it's too long. Uh, to be tormented. But do you think that those locusts are like spirits that sent out into the world and hurt men? Yes, very possible, yes. Do you think that maybe it could be kind of like that we see now people on uh, drugs that are just all so terrible sad that <coughs> they don't even have a lot or a brain anymore? Yeah. I mean, if you, <coughs> if you think of people with um, addiction or people that have um, been abused, people, you know, when things like that happen to you and that the door is opened, that's when um, Satan is just like he's hurting <coughs> you. And then when you don't realize it, it becomes part of you. You don't have to be part of you. Because um, when Jesus said, greater work shall you do, that you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, you will cast out demons in my name, we have that power and authority to use it. I think that's why the original men are like, well, most people that you talk to, they don't even realize that you have that authority. If you got the Holy Ghost, that's your seal. Yes. And if you have the Holy Ghost, most people is even got the Holy Ghost. They don't realize that they have that authority. Yes. Wasn't yeah. it? Um, there was a man in the Bible that was possessed, yeah. and and the the men tried to go to cast it out, and the demon said, "Follow oh, no. me." Say that in the news. You know that you got it. And when he knows that you got it, and you know you got it, it's That's why it's very important when something like that, say there's a demon in the church needs to be cast out. That's why it's very important for people not just to go. You gotta pray. You gotta pray because when that thing comes out, it's traveling. Yeah, he's looking for another host. Or when when you're praying, and whoever is praying, whoever, uh, because as as shepherds, because I remember um, I was told the not me myself, but the congregation, when demons like that manifested, and there were some people <coughs> around, the pastor would say, "Take a step back." Because the the not that anybody else can't cast it out, but as as a spiritual lead, you want to protect those that they should be in the place where they can cast it out. But if they're not, you've got to protect them and say take a step back. Um, now, when when we're praying, us, you, whoever, when we're praying, we can't go. <laughs> Spurs off. He was fine after that. But you know, when you and I think we have this 
show who's done it. It's the same way with spirits. You've got to show them who's done it. It's not me. It's not you. It's God. Amen. And when you know, you know that you can stand before a spirit that is unclean. And be aggressive. And, and be aggressive. Uh, that thought came to my mind because I had to ease my way over in on the other side. <coughs> That's a whole nother story. Um, <laughs> but you got you got to believe that you got authority, or you have no business trying to to cast demons out. Mm -hmm. um, so when we, like you, I said, you need, you need to recognize when things are not the way they should be, even in your own home. I mean, yeah, I, I told this story. I know several times in this church, but when we just moved into a home two years ago, and I couldn't figure out what in the world it was. And uh, one of them, one night, we lost power. And where we live, and it's dark, it is dark. And it felt like something was hovering over my face. And I, you, you, know, you ever seen something in the dark? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's dark and you see something in the dark, it ain't supposed to be there. <laughs> and I kept, I kept trying to, I, I wake up and I was, and then it, 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 it kind of consumed me. Like it, I, it had the chills, you know. I knew it was in the room, and finally I got enough of it. And I, I jumped up out of that bed, and our front door was dead bolted and locked. And I walked out of that, I walked outside, opened the door, and when I came in, I said, in the name of Jesus, you getting out of this house and you ain't coming back ever again. And the door was dead bolted and locked and slammed open, did it not? I was asleep. And it, it left. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it was gone. But you, we, we, it's the body of Christ. We, we're given that authority. God, I mean, you buy that devil up. You have no... Yes. No authority in this house. You know, that's why it's very crucial for you to pray over your doorpost mm -hmm. and your windows. Your and, it, and not just once. Mm -hmm. Keep them covered. Because mm -hmm. things come in and go out that yeah, shouldn't yeah. be coming in and going out. Well, I think it's important to note, too, something like that. You're seeing stuff. It's obviously there. I think we put up with so much stuff because... I mean, Satan's a great deceiver. Mm -hmm. He lies to us. We're like, oh, no, it's just a medical condition. Or, no, it's just this. Or, no, it's just life. These kind of things happen. Mm -hmm. But then when you stop and you take stock, you're like, hold up. Nobody should have this much stuff going on at once. And when you realize what the problem is, and then you take authority, all of a sudden, life's sunny again. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Mm -hmm. But you got to recognize that you're being attacked before you can do anything about it. First time it ever happened, we lived in our other house. And I got up in the middle of the night and uh, was going into the restroom. And I, I got to the end of the bed, and I seen just a big old <laughs> black ball. It looked like a, like a cartoon almost. But it had a <laughs> face on it. And, and it was going, and it... I, I didn't so pay no attention because I was half asleep. But I go to the bathroom and we had a separate toilet room from the bathroom. And about the time I got there, it dawned on me. There's something in that bedroom. And if you could have seen me, there was about this much wall and I was trying to turn around in that wall so they didn't see me. So I was trying to poke my head around. And I was like, Jesus' name, he's out of here. Lord, you... We reviewed this in Jesus' name. And I, I inched my way back out, you know, because I've never seen anything like that. It's been years ago. And I was like, right. it wasn't in the room, but I had to review that thing out of the house, get it out of there. So it does, yeah. You're exactly well, I, right. I think it's important to note, too. Uh, at least when I was growing up, I was always taught in Jesus' name. That's something that you say afterwards. I still say it afterwards. That's fine. But then when you look at the historical significance of that phrase, um, that comes from like doing something in the name of the king, which means you have the exact authority of the king who gave you that authority. So when we say in Jesus' name, it's not us. It's not our power. It's not our authority. We don't have to worry about it because God's got it because we're doing something using the authority of Jesus. And he yeah. gives us permission to do that. To me, that made a huge difference once I, it clicked in my mm -hmm. head. I like the way one time in the house, there was a uh, uh, sound that came in the house. And it was
what you're saying. Yeah, that's powerful too. I like the way that um, uh, Dave he says that <coughs> Jesus has given us power of eternity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. when you look at it that way, the same thing, the same authority, the same work that Jesus did, he's saying here, it's yours. You walk in it, you do it. Just like as if I were doing it and saying it. Um, yeah, the, the, the problem with, with society today is that they like to label everything mm -hmm. as a sickness. Mm -hmm. But it's not a sickness, it's a spirit. It is. Yep. And mm -hmm. if a sickness is, a lot of times they want to medicate you for it, mm -hmm. they want to say you're paranoia. Um, I don't know. It's a friend that all that gets your friend of the demons. Yes. Yep. Um, and so you're labeled, and then you, you are made to feel like you have a condition that is incurable, and you have to live with it. No, you don't. You don't. Um, and put you full of pills and stuff. Yes. Mess your mind up. Yes. And I want to be clear. You know, if you show a fear to those spirits, that's the door. You might as well yeah. forget it. Yeah. I think that when you have an encounter with a spirit like that, uh, because God is an all-knowing God, mm -hmm. he knows that his sheep mm -hmm. is encountering an unclean spirit, and I think instantly he gives you that, that power mm -hmm. to stand your ground mm -hmm. and tell that thing, in the power of Jesus Christ, you have to go. Yeah. Yeah. I think he just uh, empowers us. Is because they're not called that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we're, we're very like an attention. Yeah. And we're using that word and getting <coughs> that word out to people and, and show them what they got. You know, yep. and teach them mm -hmm. what that word really says and, and just go, you know, just little by little. You have to, you go through the whole Bible and teach the people really what they got. They really. They don't realize and really know what they got. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got God in the fullness of Jesus Christ. Most of the, the, the teachings that I hear where people don't either know about the authority of God mm -hmm. or even want, they don't know that they themselves, <coughs> if they believe yeah. what the Word says, they themselves can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They can cast out demons. They don't know that. It's because a lot of people, churches, whatever, teach the good parts of it. Oh, uh, you got to have faith, and all faith is good. But you got to recognize your authority in Christ. And sometimes the authority in Christ is left out. I've heard some people say, well, we're not God. You're exactly right. We're not God. But we have a God working through us Amen. that has said, in my name, you will cast out that these signs shall follow you. So, in, in my mind, this is just my opinion. And you have faith to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And knowing that you can do it, God gives you that to be able to do that stuff. No, God gives in, you in my opinion, if people, this goes back to preaching the truth as it is. Um, if people are not preaching the authority they have in God, I would question the authority the pulpit has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if they're not teaching it, they don't have it. And if they don't have it, what if somebody were to come in and be consumed with spirit of addiction or, um, you know, just torment? What are they going to do? Come out of the church? That's what a lot of them do. Most likely. Get out and call them a disturbance. <coughs> no. That's if, the best place for them. If, if <coughs> they need to be in the church. If they are, if anyone is coming into the church, it's for a reason. They may think it's to disrupt. But God has an assignment. Uh, you gonna, you going to come in, but you're not going to live the same. If, if the, 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 the body of Christ exercises their authority. Mm -hmm. Pastor Shane says this is a hospital. It's a spiritual hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The most essential place on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One more quick side note. Yes. We put ourselves in a lot of chains. 
Because we have authority, whether we're thinking about it through the lens of faith or not. Yeah. When you go to the doctor and he says, well, you have X, Y, and Z, and then you start talking, well, my this, my that, my diabetes, my high blood pressure, my whatever, you have claimed that, mm -hmm. and you've put yourself in more chains than you already were. God's got it. He yeah. can get you out of it. He can teach you. He can yes, work he with you. But you got to be careful the way you talk. Yeah. Death and life are in the power of the Exactly. Um, and, you know, doctors are great. Absolutely. But I, I think God uses some doctors. Absolutely. Um, but they're still practicing. Mm -hmm. I know the great physician. Right. Sometimes he uses doctors here on earth to yeah. get you started, but he's a great physician. Yeah. He got it. Hey, man. Yes. There was a, one time uh, there was this demon on this computer that belonged to somebody that I was very close to. Mm -hmm. And I, I took a picture of it on my phone. Not this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else that I knew very close, that's a, a, a relative of mine that's very powerful in the Lord, and she uh, works in uh, deliverance, and I sent her that picture, and I said, oh, I want you to look at this picture that I took a picture of that's on this computer, <coughs> of so-and-so. Well, then she took it, knowing better, knowing better. She started showing other people that she knew that was in deliverance ministry. Look at my demon. She claimed it. See what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah. Look at my demon. Ooh. Look at my demon on my phone. Mm -mm. So when she did that, then she felt she falls down her stairs. And then the Lord was like, you claimed that thing right there. You said it was yours. Yeah. So she had to rephrase everything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why like, she said did I ever get that thing out of my phone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> imagine, and we're going to take perfect this, but imagine um, when, because they've got medicine for everything, they label everything, they've got terminology for everything. Imagine how the churches that are really believing the word and the power of that God is <laughs>
say I was abused as a child, and and that caused uh, rejection. Yeah, I mean it was all these different things, and That's but I, when he prayed, and I can remember he pointed, he didn't even touch him. He pointed to him in, in Jesus' name. He dropped to the floor mm -hmm. and just started. You know, they had to get buckets and and and, and he screamed because. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble. And when you hear them scream, it, it, it's uh, it, it scared scream. me, but it should bring joy to you. Yes. Because yeah. they are being tormented. Yes. Just by the, the name <clears throat> of Jesus Christ. So, um, will we have those here? Absolutely. Will it take more than once for deliverance? Sometimes it does. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on how deep someone is. If you take someone that's been in witchcraft, they may have to be delivered several times. They may not want it off either. God may. Yeah, that's the problem. Say that again. They may not want it. Be, they may not want to be delivered. Right. Yeah, they have to want it. Yeah. And, um, and many times they'll, they'll get delivered from it. And when that stuff comes out, then they've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They've got to have that in blood, uh, or else they're just open, they're weak, mm -hmm. they're they're just, you know, because they're like a puppet. Mm -hmm. Well, if they go back to the same junk that they were doing, seven, seven more, seven more, seven more. Yeah, just, more. just, I mean, um, I heard it say like this, think of America, when they pushed, I think it was Jonathan Clark that said this, when we push God out, yeah, I think that's Satan. Yeah. Seven more, the se uh, the seven um, demons came back with a vengeance, mm -hmm. and in greater intensity. And that's what people have to realize: is when you get delivered, don't go back to it. Mm -hmm. Even the Bible says, "Don't go back to your Egypt. Mm -hmm. Don't go back to what I broke you from and freed you from. Don't mm -hmm. go back to that." Don't be like a golf, go back to the vomit. Yeah, yeah it, a lot of people do because that's that's what they know. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're familiar with, but and that enemy yeah. is working hard on them in their mind. Yeah, I feel like you this. Know what this. I you feel know like this one. You know, doing what you need to be doing. You was talking about being and the pastor says step back. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like this. He said it in John. Jesus, he spoke it. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. If you go, if you believe in anything, he said, he walks with me, he talks with me. If you're not having that relationship, you better be backing up. Yes, sir. 